Hi everybody, in this lesson today what we're going to be going through is um, the concept of um, calorimeters and why we use them in chemistry and what purpose they serve. Okay, so um, basically cal calorimeters are devices, devices that help you work out the delta H of, an, of a chemical reaction. Okay, so we are always interested in the delta H value. Okay, so we want to know what it is, okay, because in your textbook you've already got it written out, but we look here how scientists actually get that delta H value, okay? So, um, basically the calorimeter is made up of, um, it's, it's essentially a box, okay? So let me draw a three-dimensional box here, if I actually can. Um, Okay, so here we have a box, and inside that box, um, we've got water, okay? Sometimes you know how much mil of water you have, sometimes you don't. So it depends on the type of question. So here we have some water, okay? And within that, we have a little container made out of generally a metal. And um, this is basically where you put in your reaction, okay? So it's an enclosed metal box that just contains some type of reaction. Okay, so say that you want to figure out, say that you're really interested um, in figuring out how much, you know, how much um, energy a Mars bar produces. Okay, so basically what scientists do, if you were a scientist, you would put your Mars bar in there and what would happen is you would combust it. So it's a bit of a, I guess, a shame to waste all that Mars bar, but you know, um, basically what we do is we place in a chunk of Mars bar in there, we combust it, meaning that we basically got Mars bar, Mars bar plus oxygen, which gives you carbon dioxide and water. Now a Mars bar can combust basically because it contains um, a lot of sugars, which are combustible, um, they contain protein, a little bit, and fat. So all of those things can make carbon dioxide and water, okay? And as you know, this is a very exothermic reaction and therefore you've um, generally, generally the energy that is produced in that little container, the energy goes outwards, okay, into the surrounding water. So I can't actually draw this because I'm only limited to two colours, I'll get another colour soon, but um... Basically, the energy flows from the Mars bar. You know, when you combust it, it's an exothermic energy uh, reaction. So you have plus energy here. Energy is a product. And so from this little box here, that energy is transferred into the surrounding water. So what do you think happens to the water? If energy is going from this into there, obviously water is getting warmer, right? So what we have is we have a thermometer here, thermometer, and what we're going to do is essentially we're going to measure the temperature difference that has occurred because of the Mars bar, okay? Now, we also need a stirrer, okay? And the reason why you need a stirrer is the same reason as to why some people get burnt when they walk into, like when they... Um, walk into a bathtub, okay? So, um, step into a bathtub. So, the water somewhere is really cold and then it's really hot and you get burnt. And that's because the um, heat isn't, trans um, isn't, you know, evenly spread out. So, why, the reason why we have a stirrer is to make sure that the heat is evenly distributed within that calorimeter box, okay? So, um, basically, we can figure out the usefulness of this, um, this is really useful because what you can do is you can figure out the energy content of a Mars bar, okay? And that's simply by just using the fact that you know how much water changed by, you know the amount of temperature the water changed by, so the change of temperature here is known. You also know something known as um, the specific heat capacity of water. Um, specific heat capacity is just basically the ability to store some amount of um, energy in one gram of water in order to raise it by one degree. And in the case of water, this is always the co case, this, the constant, um, the specific heat capacity for water is generally 1.8 1 
um, joules per gram of water to raise it up by one degree. Okay, so the, that's the units, okay? Now, um, the energy of this particular system can be very um, easily calculated by using this formula, the M cat. Okay, basically this is the um, formula to get the energy of water and um, the energy of water um, came from your mass bar in the, at the very beginning because that's what caused the water to suddenly increase in temperature. The water didn't just go, ooh, I want to get hotter. No, it's because of this mass bar that provided that energy, okay? So um, basically what we need um, is we, in this particular case, need to have the mass of your water in there. Sometimes you won't have that, so sometimes we're going to have to do something else known as a calibration, but we'll look at that later. You need the specific heat capacity of water and you need the change of temperature of the water. Now you generally assume that this liquid around this little box is water. If it's something else, then they should give you the C value and then you can figure it out. Okay, there's numerous ways of being creative in types of questions like this. So we'll be looking at them going through problems as well. So hopefully that will help you. Now let us have a little bit of an example here. Let's say, because um, I'm now creating M&Ms, let's say that an M&M, an M&M um, was placed, was placed and combusted into the calorimeter, into the calorimeter. Okay, um, and basically what this caused when you heated the M&M up and you combusted it, okay, um, you'll find that the change of temperature of that thermometer could be 19 0.6 degrees Celsius, okay, and you could also know that there was a mass of, well, let's say that the volume of water in, a, in this particular calorimeter happened to be 100 mil, okay, so what you assume in this case, because you know the volume, you assume that the density is 1 gram per mil, the density can be different, but we won't complicate it right now, okay, so, at the moment, we know that there's 100 ml of water in this calorimeter, and so we assume that it's 100 grams. Okay, and finally, we know that the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18. Your teacher might be writing 4.2, that's fine either way. Joules per gram times by the degree. Okay, so now that we know all of that information, we can actually figure out how much energy um, these M&Ms released due to combustion. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would actually do that. Let's analyze this question. All right. So, as you know, energy is equal to the mass of the, of the um, water, so 100 grams of water, times by um, 19.6 degrees Celsius, times by... Um, 4.18 joules per, you can write this as um, joules per 1 gram times by 1 gram times by 1 degree Celsius. That's what per means, okay? That's essentially what per means. Now, let's have a look at this equation and whether or not it actually makes sense. I always get my students to make sure that the equations that they are using actually make sense mathematically, okay? So let us have a look at what happens to the units because essentially the units are going to let you know whether or not the equation works. So the grams are at the top here and the grams are on the denominator here. So obviously, as you can see, grams are going to cancel, okay? Now you've got degree 